G'day, this is Doug Jackson from Doug'sWordClock.com um, Today we're going to be having a look at how we assemble the frames for our 30cm clock boards um, over the last few years with the advent of the laser cutter which you can see in the background uh, we actually uh, laser cut most, most of our frames now to make it a lot easier to assemble um, on my ever never ending list of jobs to do is to actually update the uh, construction manual to make it clearer I'm going to be really trying to do that in um, in the next week or right too, but in the meantime I thought that I'd do just a quick YouTube video just to make it really, really clear for uh, people. So there we go. Um, I'll just put the camera where it's supposed to be to actually record what I'm doing, so I've got both hands free. So it's going to be a bit jerky for a second. There we go. Okay, now, um, let's start off with what a clock is supposed to look like. This is uh, the frame of a completed 30 centimeter work clock. You can see it's made from a series of uh, light wells. Each light well has LED strips inside it and these are made up out of baffles and baffle spacers. So you can see there's a, a set of seven baffles down it and a series of uh, baffle spacers inside it. If we turn this clock over you can see that this is the controller board. Hopefully at this stage of your construction process you will have um, completed the, the uh, controller. So we can see that um, to do the testing of the control board we can apply power. You can see the power light is lit up. You can also see the clock is doing its self test. If you don't have a clock at this stage of course you're not going, going to see anything because this cable is not going to be connected but after a period of time you'll notice that the little pulse or activity LED just flickers away once a second. If your controller is in that state before you start making this uh, frame then you're in, in exactly the uh, correct position that tells you that it's likely your RUM um, controller is operating beautifully. <coughs> so, firstly um, in order to make our clock, we use an, an acrylic solvent. In my case, here in Australia, I use a product which is called Acrobond 105. Um, I've used a number of um, different adhesives over time. It's interesting, you can see that the um, label dissolves. It's not a particularly wonderful chemical. Um, it does uh, cause cancer in lab rats, so when you're using these types of uh, solvents, you have to be very careful <coughs> very careful to make sure that you have good quality ventilation and that you don't get any of it on your uh, skin. So in order to ensure that you can see that I'm wearing um, a workshop uh, coat. I've got sa safety glasses which I always wear whenever I'm working with uh, solvents and in fact whenever I'm working with anything spinning and just go go gently. Now um, Acrobond probably isn't available in the United States because this is made by an Australian company called Acrylic Technologies Australia. In your country you will have some sort of acrylic solvent. I found out about this by having a chat to a sign making company here in um, Canberra and they explained to me how, uh, how acrylic uh, works, what sort of glues, glues they use, what some of their um, tricks are. It's totally worthwhile having a chat with your local sign maker to see what sort of products are available to you in your, partic in your particular country. Um, I can't provide the solvent in the kits. Um, they won't let this stuff onto aeroplanes in the same way as they don't let bleach onto aeroplanes and, and we're not supposed to transport lithium batteries. It's one of those things which is tricky to transport by air. The solvent I put into a small bottle um, with a, a bluntened, bluntened syringe tip um, and that just mean, mean, means that I can uh, meter the sol solvent out in a controlled way. So before we do anything, safety glasses. Okay, safety glasses. So, your frame will arrive to you with a, your, your, your pot kit will actually arrive with a piece of um, protective paper. 
over one side so this this protective paper here would have been bonded to that now I always write top and front onto the um, onto the LED mounting board to make it crystal clear for you which edge of the frame is which now before we start when you make the frame you need to get this LED mounting strip spaced off your work surface by 20 millimeters. Now 20 millimeters is the thickness of one of these um, baffles. So you'll notice that the little jig that I use is exactly the same, same, same thickness as a baffle. You can use some pieces of wood, you can use uh, some pieces of cardboard, you can use acrylic, you can use all sorts of stuff. In my particular case I've got a, a mounting jig because quite Quite frankly, we've made 600 of these uh, clocks so far this, this uh, year, so it makes assembly for me a little bit quicker. So, keeping in mind that this edge here was the top, and this edge was the left hand side, and this was the front, we start assembly by turning the LED frame over, so we end up with this row of LEDs of, um, of pre drilled holes down the, left -hand, uh, down the right hand side and three holes at the top at the uh, top of the frame. We then get our um, four side pieces. Now this here is a bottom. You can see because it's got a power socket and the uh, holes for the uh, time setting buttons. You can see that this is a top. It's got the four holes for mounting. And these are two sides. If we look carefully at the sizes of all of these components, sides are in fact longer than, than um, tops. So we start by removing the protective paper from, from, from the edges that we're going to be glue, gluing together and we hold these together. Now the solvent that uh, we use is beautifully beautifully fast acting uh, just a little trickle of solvent, little trickle of solvent, little trickle of solvent. Hold it together for, I know, probably five or so seconds. And then let go. Now, when we're doing the bottom, remember that this is the back of the clock now. We put the front against the bench. So because this is the back of the clock, we get our um, power socket and our time setting buttons and we make sure that they're at the back. We don't put the power socket towards the front. So the power socket towards the top. Again, just a little gentle trickle of acrylic solvent. Now did I mention that I'm wearing safety glasses? The last thing in the world you want is to get any of these uh, acrylic solvents in your eyes. So here we go. And now we'll do this other side again, just a gentle trickle, just a little bit, a couple of drops. And then we hold it in place while it bonds. Now the way that this solvent works is it actually dissolves the top part of the um, acrylic, turns it into this gooey paste which then flashes off with its solvent, which is why we make sure that we have good air, air flow in the workshop. Let's give it a few more seconds before we turn, turn the uh, frame over, because we don't want it to fall, fall to pieces on us. Here we go, almost there. And that will do beautifully. So we don't need our little jig. In my case, the jig lives on the um, wall. I'll just move the camera very unprofessional and show you. You can see that the jigs live on the wall to make it easy for me to get to them. There we go. So now we have our completed frame. Turn the frame over and we can move up the bottom, the edge with the holes facing towards us, the top with the three holes at the top, and we've got the, the uh, line of pre drilled holes down the left hand side now. So this is now correct. Now, supplied in your kit will have been um, 
a whole set of um, laser cut baffles. Uh, we do laser cut them now to make it easier for you to assemble. When you get them, they'll have a piece of, piece of protective paper on them. So we gently remove the protective paper. I use, use a knife, some people use some tweezers, some people have fingernails. Um, whatever method works, and just remove the pr protective paper from them. Be careful not to bend them because acrylic does snap. It's, it's, it's one of those um, realities. Now included in your kit also is a whole pile of um, these baffle spacers. There are two types. There's one style here that has uh, tabs on the left and the right and one style here which just has a single tab. I'll describe the difference between those but just make a nice neat little pile of one side and of, of uh, the other type. Again, gently remove the protective paper backing not particularly hard and then end up with a pile of components that are ready. Now, you will have noticed that each of the baffles has a number. This has, for example, the number 5. This baffle has the number 2. The numbers relate to what order they are going top to bottom. So here is baffle number 1. We'll get the number, we'll put the number down the left hand edge and we'll put it into the top. One and two. So there we go. Now these baffle separators that have a straight edge, you'll notice that the clock, this side here, doesn't have anywhere for these little tabs, tabs to go. So we get these, these separators and we'll put one and two. Simple as that. Now because it can be a little bit irritating working with stuff we'll just use just a little bit of solvent just to attach that in place. Baffle number two goes in next. There is there is a there's two words. So the first baffle supports our three words. It is half from ten. The second one supports our two words which I think is a quarter and twenty. There we go. And again, a little bit of solvent. Beautiful. Now, it's important with this second one, just have a little piece of foreign body inside there, take that out. Try very hard to keep inside the clocks nice and clean. Baffle number three. Again, we need two, so one and two. Now, don't glue these in from this point on. There's a reason for that. That'll that that'll become clear. Baffle number four. Held in place by two of them. Now, it's really easy to tell where where the baffles go. The, the big secret is that there will be a hole in the top baffle and a hole in the bottom baffle that line up nice and straight. Baffle number five, always with the number down the left hand edge. Ah, sometimes you might find a little bit of um, foreign material that didn't quite get cut. Just ch chop that out. <coughs> Baffle 5. Now of course in the olden days we used to, um, we didn't have the ability to la laser cut these, we just used these. Here is a white one but you get, get, get the idea we just used, used to use these 20 mil um, material. We used to space them in, then we used to individually cut each of these pieces to fit and it was um, quite tedious now with the advent of our ability to um, laser cut cut the material easily uh, it just makes it makes assembly so much easier it also makes our final product so much more professional something that's actually very important to me is that um, someone should be able to 
uh, look at the inside of one of our, our, our clocks and go, it wasn't made by a kid. Um, so, here we go. Beautiful. Now we have our last piece. Now, it's entirely normal at this point to have a little bit of space. If you see closely, there's a little bit of space with the, with the last, last piece. We do leave a little bit of slack in our frame and we do that because the thickness of these pieces of acrylic is not always 3.0 millimeters. I believe acrylic is made using a float method and um, it may be 3.1 millimeters, 3.2 millimeters. I have even had acrylic in the past that was um, 3.4 millimeter thick when they when it was sold as three millimeter acrylic. So we leave a little bit of a tolerance in there so that it makes sure that we can always assemble our clock. Now, did you see what I just did there? I gently bonded the bottom one. I've wriggled these together so that the so that um, the gaps uniform. And at the moment, the gaps are 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 millimeters bur bur between each of them. So, very gently, just a little bit of the sol 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 solvent glue in each of the corners, each of the supports, and along the bottoms. Here we go. Ah, we'll make sure that we get that edge. Make sure that the solvent... You can actually move the solvent around inside the cells. Make sure that we bonded nice and firmly, and that's it. That is a completed frame. I have a dog with white hair, sorry. So, this is our com com completed frame. We now would leave this sit um, to let the solvent finish bonding firmly uh, for a period of, uh, we normally leave them overnight. Um, even two or three, three days to make sure the solvent has um, completely flashed off. Um, it is very, very, very important that uh, we don't work with uh, frames that are wet. So, there we go. You may have just seen Lindsay stroll through. Lindsay is one of the kids who, who helps assemble things. Um, he's busy in the other room at the moment. Um, building um, clock circuit boards for me. So there we go. Anyway, there we go. Um, thank you very much for uh, watching. The next video that I'll do is how to install the LED mounting, the, the actual LED strips themselves. Okay, take care. See you later.